Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about placental imaging. This is the first video in this video series with title of Normal Placenta. The outline of this presentation include introduction, normal placenta, ultrasound features of normal placenta, placental grading system, rule of three-dimensional ultrasound in placental imaging, and final teaching points. At first, introduction. The placenta plays a crucial role throughout pregnancy and its importance may be overlooked during routine antenatal imaging evaluation. So, detailed systematic assessment of the placenta at ultrasonography and standard imaging examination during pregnancy is important. Many abnormalities of the placenta herald the possibility of future fetal compromise and therefore can be regarded as an early warning sign. Placental development begins at the time of blastocyte implantation and throughout the pregnancy it serves as an all-in-one respiratory, excretory and endocrine organ while providing nutrition and immune support for the developing fetus. Normal placenta. At term, the typical placenta weighs about 470 grams, is round to oval with 22 cm diameter and has a central thickness of 2.5 cm. It's composed of a placental disc, extra placental membranes and a three-vessel umbilical cord. The maternal surface is the basal plate, which is divided by clefts into portion termed cotyledons. These clefts mark the site where the internal septa, originating from the decidua basalis, and push up into the intervillous space. The fetal surface is the chorionic plate, into which the umbilical cord inserts, typically in the center. Large fetal vessels that originate from the cord vessels then spread and branch across the chorionic plate before interning stem villi of the placental parenchyma. The chorionic plate and its vessels are covered by amnion. The ultrasound features of normal placenta. Ultrasound is the primary imaging modality of choice for placental assessment in almost all clinical situations. On ultrasound, the placenta is visible as early as six weeks of gestation with transvaginal ultrasound. The placenta is visible by 10 weeks gestation at transabdominal ultrasound where it's seen as a thickened echogenic ream of tissue surrounding the gestation sock. Color Doppler imaging can be used to detect intervillous blood follow by 12 to 14 weeks gestation. This power Doppler image shows the myometrium, placenta, and also intervillous follow in the placenta. The retroplacental complex composed of the decidua, myometrium, and uterine vessels, which is also readily seen. The retroplacental clear space or retroplacental complex normally measures less than 1 to 2 mm and as the name suggests appears hypoechoic. The retroplacental space is a common location of hematoma development. Sonographically, the placenta in the first and early second trimester appears homogeneous in echotexture and mildly hyperechoic compared with the underlying myometrium. We can see in this image the placenta in a twin pregnancy at 14 weeks gestation, which is hyperechoic compared with myometrium, and also in this image at 18 weeks gestation also appears hyperechoic compared with myometrium. It then becomes more isoechoic with advancing gestation. After mid-pregnancy, it's common to identify a small placenta 
beautiful Santa Lucensis or placental lakes famous as Venus lakes and in the third trimester the placenta may appear more heterogeneous with visible calcifications. Ultrasound evaluation of the placenta includes assessment of the size, thickness and echo texture. Normal placenta at term measures about 15 to 20 cm in diameter and ranges from 2 to 4 cm in thickness. As a general rule, the placental thickness in millimeters roughly approximates the gestational age in weeks. A reliable reference named Collins Ultrasonography in Obstetric and Gynecology believes that it doesn't normally exceed 4 cm in the second trimester and 6 cm in the third trimester, but many papers believe that it should not exceed 4 cm. Placental Grading System The utility of the grading system for placental maturation using ultrasound, which described in this study, has decreased in recent years due to its weak correlation with adverse prenatal outcome. According to this grading system, we can see in grade 0 homogeneous placenta uniform echogenicity without indentation. We can see these forms of placenta at first and early second trimester, usually between 10 to 17 weeks of gestation. We can see in grade 1 occasional hypo or hyperechoic areas. We can see this grade of placenta at late second trimester. In grade 2, larger indentations along the chronic plate and larger calcifications in a dot dash configuration along the basilar plate can be seen, which we can see this type of the placenta at early third trimester. This image shows a normal placenta at 35 weeks gestation, shows calcification in a dot and dash configuration along the basal plate outlining the cotyledons. But this ultrasound image of the placenta at 25 weeks gestation in a patient with preeclampsia shows premature calcification in a linear pattern suggestive of a distribution in vascular territories. In grade 3, we can see complete identations through the basilar plate creating cotyledons. As you can see in this image, more irregular calcification with substantial shadowing can be seen. We can see this type of the placenta at late third trimester, about 39 weeks of gestation and post-date fetuses. A lack of progression through the various placental grades or maturation process seems to have no clinical significance. However, preterm placental calcification or premature calcification increases the risk of adverse fetal outcomes such as preterm births, low birth weight, low OPCAR scores, and neonatal death, and also maternal adverse outcome including postpartum hemorrhage, placental abruption, and the need for maternal ICU care. In this large study, from about 1,100 pregnancies found a correlation between early maturity of the placenta and adverse fetal outcomes. These authors recommended close clinical and ultrasound follow-up if a grade 1 placenta is noted before 27 weeks of gestation, a grade 2 placenta is noted before 32 weeks, and a grade 3 placenta is seen before 34 weeks of gestation. The rule of three-dimensional ultrasound in placental imaging. The introduction of three-dimensional ultrasound has permitted a new approach to the assessment of the placenta. 3D surface rendered imaging provides more detailed information on abnormalities involving the curvature and continuity of the placenta and the special relationship of the placenta accreta and serves as a more easily comprehensible visual tool for the referring physician and the parents. 
advances in 3D ultrasound technology have made it possible to assess the placental volume and its vascular status using power Doppler. Three-dimensional placental volume measurement is done using traditional multiplanar and rotational techniques. The discussion about 3D imaging of the placenta and its techniques requires a full video. If you are interested in presenting this video, please write in the comment section. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. On ultrasound, the placenta is visible as early as 6 weeks of gestation with transvaginal ultrasound and by 10 weeks gestation at transabdominal ultrasound. Sonographically, the placenta in the first and early second trimesters appears homogeneous in echo texture and mildly hyperechoic compared with the underlying myometrium. It then becomes more isoechoic with advancing gestation. As a general rule, the placental thickness in millimeters roughly approximates the gestational age in weeks, but it should not exceed 4 cm. A lack of progression through the various placental grades or maturation process seems to have no clinical significance. However, preterm placental calcification or premature calcification increases the risk of adverse fetal and maternal outcomes. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.